Hello and welcome to the Science Fiction Book Review Podcast. My name is Luke Burridge and this is the show where I review every single science fiction book that I read as I read it. There's no set schedule, just whenever I finish a book I do the review, stick it up here on the podcast feed. And today I'm going to be reviewing a recent book by an author who I've not read before called Peter Kleins. And I think one of the reasons why I've not read him before is because in my head, Peter Kleins and Ernest Klein, who wrote Ready Player One, a book which uh, I didn't really get into, um, kind of got combined purely because, you know, an American author or whatever with Klein versus Kleins. And um, so uh, I'd seen this uh, book around before. Oh, no, I'd seen some books of Peter Klein's around before. There's a series. I saw one called The Fold. Never really got around to it. Um, and then someone by email suggested this book because it came out this year. And uh, and uh, it was also suggested to me by um, Audible as an audio book. So I was like, all right, let's get into this. It's called um, Paradox Bound by Peter Kleins, some information here from the uh, uh, Goodreads page, hardcover, 373 pages, published September 26th, 2017, by Crown. And um, this is a book, uh, an author who I didn't really know much about, it's got kind of a fun, quirky cover, and when I started in with this book, I realised, oh, right, okay, Paradox Bound, it's probably about time travel, well, actually, it's kind of, kind of worked that out from the title as well. Um, Although, weirdly enough, they, 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 there is a kind of interesting twist on time travel here, which is like, no, this isn't time travel, this is history travel. We're not travelling through time, we're travelling through history. And I quite enjoyed that uh, little conceit, because it seems to set up the idea that when they travel somewhere, they're not travelling just somewhere in space and time, they're travelling to different moments of history, which, uh, you know, sounds like a fun uh, thing, because that's, that's what time travel is quite often in, uh, you know, TV shows and books and stuff it's like okay we, we want to go to the interesting places where things happened we don't just want to go back to random places where things don't happen um, unfortunately some books by Connie Willis is kind of based around going to places where nothing happens and nothing matters and you can't affect history or anything um uh, this is a, a different thing. Um, however, a lot of the idea of like, well, how do you get there is kind of hand waved away. There's lots of like, well, how does this work? And kind of like, well, we don't have the answers. And how does this work? Oh, we don't have the answers to that. Why do the bad guys not have any faces? I oh, don't really have the uh, answers. Um, and to be honest, maybe those answers did come up, but I stopped reading this book around about halfway through because while the uh, original idea uh, or some of the original idea, I got halfway through, it, it sounded good. I got halfway through this book and it wasn't grabbing me and I and I suddenly worked out what was gonna happen so at the start of the book there's a guy that I just here on the getting this stuff from the blurb of on on Goodreads Eli is a is a young kid and he and a car drives past an old model a from 1920 something drives past and he's like, wow, that's interesting. And some little adventure happens when he's eight years old. And then again, when he's four, 14 years old, the same car with the same person who hasn't aged drives past. And then uh, he's like, oh, this is interesting. And it turns out that that character's name is Harry. She drives a car. The car is probably a time machine. And and then, uh, and then, yeah, and then a few years later, or actually quite a few years later, when he's like 29 or something like that, or 30 years old, um... Uh, Harry, e Harry and Eli meet again, and this time he's like, "Oh no, I'm going to go off. I'm going to go off on the road and uh, and uh, see if I can uh, track her down and warn her about these these weird faceless um, men who are or a faceless man who is trying to track her down." Um, and uh, it has the it has the uh, the problem where like someone like in this situation when you see someone who hasn't aged in all that time and they're driving the weird thing and they've got some weird uh it says here um someone who uh, is revolutionary war era clothing and wielding an oddly modified flint flintlock rifle and driving a hundred year old car and they keep turning up again like many years apart and not growing old and like it's one of those things that as I'm reading like a, a comedy uh, or a humorous science fiction book, I'm just like, okay, why doesn't the main character just go, all oh, right, okay, so, the, so I'm in a time travel story. And I kind of wish more would do that because it kind of gets a bit tiresome having someone go, oh, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on here? How can this be happening? What's going on? How? What do you mean you're going to be, you have to be there last Friday or you've got to be there next Friday? Like you're going to... Like, and it's just kind of get a little bit tiresome with someone all, always trying to work out what the 
what the next, uh, you know, what the next time travel rule is going to be, or what this next step is it's like. Oh, so it's time travel. It's like, yeah, okay, four chapters, and no, we knew it go. Knew, we knew it was uh, time travel, but the characters have to catch up. It's actually a, a, a short, um, uh, funny, like a clip. I can't remember who it was from, um, but it was. A, it's called some Groundhog Daying, and it's just someone turns up at the office and is like suddenly has superhuman powers of memory and recognizing people and knowing what's going to happen next. And immediately someone turns to him and goes, "Are you Groundhog Daying?" He's like, "No, I'm not. I'm not Groundhog. I totally am Groundhog Daying." And then it's sort of like, going, "Oh, great! Tell me about this about Groundhog Daying." And they and you don't nowadays you don't need to set up what the rules of Groundhog Daying are. You're just like, "Oh yeah, I'm stuck in a time loop and I can you know infinitely." learn stuff and I can kill people and there are no consequences, all that kind of stuff, is all wrapped up on the idea of, yeah, yeah, I'm Groundhog Daying. And I kind of wish more, like, if you're just going to do a comedy book or if you're going to do a story like this, just get, just skip over the five chapters of somebody going, but what's happening here? What's happening? What's going on here? It's just like, yeah, okay, I'm in, a, I'm in time travel. This is what we're doing. We're in a time travel story. Let's go for it. I know the rules of time travel, and if there are any different rules of time travel, um, let's just get to those different rules of time travel. Like I say, there are a few different rules of time travel in this one. Turns out the car isn't so much of a, um, a time machine in its own right, but it, it drives around the roads in a way uh, which can get, which can, I don't know, use the time slip like on different sections of roads and different highways in America and different train lines or something there's these slip points where you can slip between time and space um by uh, yeah driving between these different things uh, like driving over these things and I can't, I can't remember the exact kind of thing but yeah I go over these slip points um so uh once I once we work out oh that's what's happening it's a time travel and they're going to meet up and go on an adventure together um what we're left with then is like, okay, time travel adventure in a car across America. Who are these characters? And Harry seems to be kind of like interesting. Eli is kind of boring. And it's annoying that someone who is so boring and who has so few opinions or ideas or um, ambition in life, because he just, it's sort of like, here again, right from the Goodreads blurb, Eli's willing to admit he's a little obsessed with the mysterious woman he met years ago. Now, I do understand that if you, if something happens to you as a child, childhood and then as a teen and you're like oh this is actually interesting you know who is this person but it's sort of like a little obsessed to the point where he learns car mechanics and learns everything he can about old cars just in case this old car comes back again and he can like go tr track down what it is he tries to learn everything about the revolutionary war era clothes that she's wearing and all these different kind of stuff and and then it's sort of like he falls for her like in a kind of creepy kind of stalkerish way and I'm just like oh is this meant to be the hero of the story and then it seems very very quickly and very conveniently just going oh right you've worked out who I am you've got to come with me now and you have also got to become a a, a traveling uh, roaming time traveler um, agent um, with this uh, this organization that we've got to do this you just got to come with me now and it seems like wow his obsession this a little bit obsessed with the mysterious woman he met years ago seemed to kind of fall into being her travel companion um very quickly and very easily as no if i was harry i'd probably just shoot eli and just leave it's like well yeah there's no consequences i can kill anyone and it doesn't really matter because i'm a time traveler stuff i don't I don't have to come back to this area of town or area of america in this time again a dead person doesn't matter let's just move on he's just no he's just a useless accessory anyway um of course he probably turns out not to be a useless accessory but i only got halfway through this book and let me get to the reason why. It's because once we set up time traveling car stuff, yeah, I mentioned this before, time traveling car, boring person, slightly interesting person, being chased by a kind of interesting person, a few people dying, a bit of tragedy, but then going on, oh, right. So we're going to go on a cross country through the history of America, um, uh, time travel, history, travel romp. And what are they looking for? And it literally says we are looking for the American dream. And I suddenly started going... Oh no! This is this is uh, this is sort of American gods, isn't it? It's the people traveling around, going, "Well, what does it mean to be America? What is the American mythos? What is the foundational American stories? What is what does it mean? You know, like, oh, is it these things? What is it? It's the small town America. It's traveling across the road story. Is you know one of the like the you know the road movie that kind of thing? Traveling across on the road, all these different kind of things. Is traveling across America is a a big part of the American, and I was like, oh, right, yeah, 
yeah, the automobile, the Revolutionary War clothes, you know, all these different kind of things is all going to be wrapped up. And by the end of it, we're going to find out what the American dream is. And as soon as I got to that point, I was like, there's probably a reason why I didn't finish American Gods either time. I tried reading it twice and neither time did I get you know, get through it. One time I stopped after about four or five chapters. The other time I got about halfway through and was just like, I just can't do this anymore. Because fundamentally, the question of in science fiction or in these, you know, fantasy books of what is America and America coming to grips with itself in this kind of timey-wimey, you know, American gods kind of way, just, it's not that it doesn't interest me, but actually kind of annoys me that this is a a, a, a kind of... A, a, a pursuit that the um, the uh, th- these authors are wanting to 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 make, and I understand the idea. You know, I understand the urge to do it, and I get onto a bit that get onto a bit of that uh, a bit later, more of that a bit later. But again, it just doesn't interest me because what Peter Kleins thinks America is about, or what the foundational myth is, it doesn't matter what conclusion he comes to. I'm either not going to care about it or disagree with it. And and I kind of know that because he's probably just a white guy from... Um, he says it grow, grows up in the Stephen King fallout zone of Maine. And I'm just, like, inspired by comic books, Star Wars and Saturday morning cartoons. I'm just like, that person is not somebody whose vision of America I'm going to find interesting. And what he thinks is the American dream isn't something that I'm going to ad- identify with or find interesting in any way. And so I went across to, to make sure I didn't keep reading this book and, and could just return the audio book to, to Audible. Um, I went over to uh, Goodreads and I found one friend who has, uh, who, uh, a few friends, but one friend who has written a long fr- uh, review on this. And it is uh, Christopher Murphy, rated it five stars. It says, this is the book I was hoping to read when I first heard a vague mention of Neil Gaiman's American Gods, a very po- polarizing novel which tends to either inspire or disappoint each reader who comes across it. Your mileage may vary. Um, not because the two books share the same subject matter, of course. Anyway, it goes on to uh, goes on to actually say exactly what I was feeling as I was as I was getting into halfway through this book and go, oh, this book might not be for me. And then he opens it with sort of like, yeah, American Gods. Anyway, Christopher Murphy within this book. Uh, again, the, the, there is some spoilers in that review as he talks about it. But when we got through to the end, of it, he says, oh, what is the American dream? Well, the American dream is dot, 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 this is what they discover. And I'm like, I am now really, really, really glad that I didn't carry on and read that through because now I know what he thinks the American dream is or the, you know, what the American dream could be to Peter Kleins, uh, who, who wrote this book. Uh, not not so great. Anyway, but Christopher Murphy rated this book five stars. So if you want a, a time travel, history travel romp to get into the, the bottom of what the American dream is. Uh, I mean, in this book, they say, oh, the American dream is a thing which was stolen by, I think, an Egyptian goddess or something like that. Um, it says, uh, uh, Goodreads blurb here as well. His determination soon leads him into a strange, dangerous world and a chase, aco- a chase not just across the country, but through a hundred years of history with nothing less than America's past, present and future at stake. Um, yeah, that's not that's not a book I was going to spend another seven hours of audiobook with. Um, I would, uh, ra- life is short, I would rather get onto other things. Um so yeah, that's my reading experience. However, um, if I am to get slightly political here and weigh in on why I don't, I don't find these books interesting or inspiring, it's because the American dream seems to seems to me from someone outside, and I'm not saying where I live or where I'm from is better than America in any way. I'm just saying that like it's the American dream seems to be like a willingness to forget that the country is like the foundation of the country is based on uh like land grabbing you know and genociding native americans the economy based on slavery and perpetuated into the current day via massive um i don't know inequality and racism and systemized you know persecution of minorities and all that kind of stuff that's what the american past is and the american dream seems to be 
a, a kind of like, hey, we're all, you know, white middle class people here. How can we forget all of that and make our country's identity be not that? And that's a harsh way of putting it and a blunt way of putting it. But the way that I see it is that America does very, very well in the world. And it's because they don't they haven't lost any big war. Like, for example, I live in Germany. And after the Second World War, Germany had to look very hard at itself and go, OK, so what are we as a country? What can we what do we need to do as a country? How can we rebuild as a country? And all of the foundational aspects of what they had just been through as a country of like how the country came together in the uh, you know in the 19th century into one country and all the 20th century um let's say issues to skim over like massive issues and um, those all had to be looked at and addressed and talked about and now every kid at school in germany learns about uh, you know about the holocaust and about the second world war and all these other kind of things and then it kind of happened again with east germany like in west germany coming together a bit li- a little less so but there was kind of a looking at ourselves going all oh, right so what is it like what is our past and what do we what do we do? It's kind of like by losing the Second World War, it was forced to address itself and kind of not come up with a new founding myth or, um, you know, a new uh, a German dream or American dream for Germany or anything like that. But it had to kind of go through that process of relearning itself what it's what it was about. And uh, and the same in the UK, even though, um, you know, Britain also won the Second World War, it was l- left with like massive amounts of debt, lost all its empire. And a lot of the identity of Britain, even now, is kind of struggling with, oh, you know, losing the empire and not being as great as it is. And old Brexit is kind of wrapped up in that. It's having to face, you know, in a time of like after a crisis to go, OK, what is it that we need to do here? What is it? What is foundational to our country? And, of course, Brexit is all a big fallout from that where people are going, oh, actually, you know, what we decided we were as a country, oh, we want to go back to what we used to be or whatever the, you know, whatever people think they're going back to. Apparently blue passports are important or whatever like that. Um, But, yeah, like countries have to go through or national identities have to go through these crises. Crises? Crises. And America is one where every time it has come out of something, it has, like... told itself or tricked itself or not even tricked itself like the reality is that they did win the second world war and they did very well out of the second world war it sort of boosted their economy and afterwards they were like oh yeah we got all these you know all these uh you know army people we can do all this sort of like what is it the the, all the uh infrastructure stuff we'll just get the uh, marine engineers to come in or whatever they are uh the army engineering corps and they'll just build these bridges and build these dams and build all the highways and all these different kind of stuff and it was all like oh it actually turns out the second world war was a good thing and all the way through oh and also the cold war was out yeah we won that and the first world war and even the civil war somehow somehow america won that so we're like all right we've dealt with the slavery thing um but there has never been a time where america has had to go actually let us now address the past head on let us now work out what our new country identity is going to be so all of the time, all of these things of going and saying, oh, what is the American dream? It, none of these, th- like, it, it seemed to me like I was reading this book and I was like, oh, it's a white man wondering what America is about. I'm like, why do I, like, why is that, why is that, is that person asking or talking about America? Because it gets to the point where I'm just like, I don't care what conclusion you come to. If you get halfway through a book, not addressing the fact that you're a white guy from Maine and your main character is a white guy from Maine in from a boring town as a, and he's a computer programmer. Like, how is this person going to get to the bottom of what America is? Um, and they go off to the West and I'm sure there's lots of stuff. But again, maybe the book is amazing. Maybe the second half addresses all of these things. However, it it seems to me that the the American dream is like a like a, almost a literal whitewashing exercise. Like they go out to the old west and it's like, is there, you know, they go into a saloon and there's someone with a beard and he doesn't have a beard anymore. And then they go off and there's like, oh, there's a railway here. Oh, there's a railway here. And I'm like, 
look, even even like the Lone Ranger movie, which is all about the Wild West, it kind of slightly, like in a very weird, problematic, racist way, addressed the fact that, oh, this, um, this railway line uh, was only possible because we took all the land away from the Native Americans who lived here. Oh, there's a whole, you know, uh, cultures and civilization. Oh, we'll just move them out the way. What do you mean move them out the way? Oh, just, you know, we'll just go through this burial gun. What does that actually mean to put something through a burial gun? And I see it even today, like, of course, in America, like, you, you just look at that and just go, wow, there's, there's still, like, this self-awareness that is needed to come to terms with a past and work out what the country stands for and what the, what the founding myth is possible to be only comes with defeat. And I think... I know it's weird to say this, but I think electing Trump might be America's, America's like, oh shit, like, we've got to look at ourselves and, and see this kind of thing. I'm not saying that electing Trump is as bad as losing the Second World War, or as good as losing the Second World War, or anything like that. I'm just saying it's one of those times where you're just going to go, oh right, this might be the moment where actually it, it could be possible to find a new founding myth or come up with a new national identity or at least look at our past and understand what the founding of the country really was and what the basis of the country was. Um, so anyway, it's the, maybe there's hope in the future, but that's not going to come through reading like, uh, um, white science fiction authors, uh, musings on what, what it's, what it is to be an American, uh, and what the American dream is, uh, doesn't, uh, it's difficult for me to, uh, get enthused about that kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, as my review of a book which I didn't finish, and, uh, uh, some political opinions which probably won't win me any fans, um, but it just seems to me that this project of what is the American dream is a, a, a hist is really a history project, and this is a history story, and it seems to be willfully ignorant about any non-white history or any non-white experience of America. When, for me, looking at America from the outside, like, everything I hear and read... I, li I literally just read a news story. It says that the... Um, uh, what is it? The uh, Malaysian soldiers who were involved... I think it was Malaysian. I can't remember... Malaysian soldiers who were involved in this uh, battle and this forced march by the Japanese, um, and uh, the last one of them, or the last survivor, or one of the one survivor of this has died, and it's sort of like, oh yeah, we took part in this march and we fought alongside the Americans, and we were promised that um, after the war we'd be able to get American citizenship, and sort of, and I came to America, and it turns out, oh, all that time when we said, oh yeah, you fight with us Americans and you get American citizenship, turns out, nope, and uh, all of the benefits after the Second World War, it's like, oh, it turns out they were just for white people, ah, right, uh, you mean, you mean, uh, you mean for Americans, no, not even for Americans, or just for white Americans. And you're like, oh, really? Like that? And that's sort of like every day, every news story, you just go, oh, it's the the racism. Oh, that's what it. It's just foundational. Like everything about everything about the American experience seems to come down to it. Sort of like, oh, it's just racism all the way down. Is it? Yeah, great. And again, not trying to say, <laughs> not trying to say that uh, other places are a lot better. But there seems to be just a little bit of little bit of self awareness that you know the racism is a problem and it is something that needs to to be dealt with or I don't know it just seems I know it just seems crazy that America you can have so many stories and it all comes down to this one foundational foundational myth which is oh yeah actually all the benefits go to the white people um what was that story that I read in the I think Boston area that the the average wealth of white homes was sort of like 270,000 or that's how much you know you know assets minus debt or something and the average wealth of black homes was like 47 cents or two dollars or something like that and you and it's and that's the clearest thing clearest indication is race and all these kind of things so anyway it all comes down to race and a book like this didn't even mention that in the first half of itself um when it could anyway that's my review blah 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 etc right I would rate this book but I only read half of it so if I only read half a book the most I can give it is like one and a half stars so to be kind I'll give it one and a half stars but I only got halfway through and uh, and then ask for my audible credit back because I was really not getting into it and enjoying it so uh, yeah you can uh, one and a half stars yeah follow me on Twitter oh no let's see oh no actually I was gonna say let's see what other people thought about this book but I already talked about uh, uh, the one friend on Goodreads who uh, reviewed it, um, pretty highly reviewed actually already on on Goodreads, 3.89 stars. Um, 
and four four point zero average among friends, but only like five people have read it. So uh, of of my friends on Goodreads, but you should become my friends on Goodreads so I can see what you think about books like this. Also, tell me, should I read another Ernest Klein? Uh, no, sorry, not Ernest Klein. Uh, Peter Klein's book, like The Fold or Fourteen or what is it? The uh, um, the X Heroes series. Are they worth it? Are they better than this? Um, by looking at some other people's reviews, like uh, it seems that people not uh, overly enthused about this book. Um, and that others might be better. So maybe I'll check out some others. So email me, um, luke at juggler.net, or become my friends on Goodreads, message me on there, join in with the SFBRP listener group um, on the, on Goodreads, a little bit quiet recently, but I guess it's Christmas and stuff. Um, it's Christmas for me recently. This, this podcast will probably not be uploaded for another week or so. While I am uh, sailing in Antarctica, the internet is very slow and very expensive. So I'll upload this later. Yep, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Luke Burridge. Follow me on Instagram. I'm at Luke Burridge there. Also on YouTube with my vlogging and other bits and pieces. I'm Luke Burridge on there too. So check check me out in all the places. I'm Luke Burridge everywhere. Uh, for that is my name and username everywhere. Right, uh, that's it for me. Thanks a lot for listening, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>